Assalamu alaikum fam, hope you're doing well. So I'm in the kitchen, so a little different setup because the sun is like really glaring on the glass right now, which makes it very hot. And uh, yeah, so no. We are in number seven, which is where Heraclius is asking, you know, about the behavior of the Prophet, which is one of the longer uh, hadiths. So we're continuing on that. Bismillah rahman rahim Let's begin. Heraclius asked the translator to convey to me the following. I asked you about his family, and your reply was that he belongs to a noble family amongst you. In fact, all the messengers come from noble families amongst their respective peoples. I questioned you whether anybody else among you claims such a thing. Your reply was in the negative. If the answer had been in the affirmative, I would have thought that this man was following the previous man's statement. Then I asked you whether any one of his ancestors was a king. Your reply was in the negative. And if I had been in the affirmative, I would have thought that this man wanted to take back his ancestral kingdom. I further asked whether he was ever accused of telling lies before he said what he said. And your reply was in the negative. So I wondered how a person who does not tell a lie about others could ever tell a lie about Allah. I then asked you whether the rich people followed him or the poor. You replied that it was the poor who followed him. And in fact, these poor always are the followers of the messengers. Then I asked you whether his followers were increasing or decreasing. Your reply was that they were increasing. And in fact, this is the way of the true faith. Till it is completed in all respects, I further asked you whether there was anybody who, after embracing his religion, became displeased and disregarded his religion. Your reply was in the negative, and in this is the sign of true faith. When his delight enters the heart and mixes with him completely, I asked you whether he had ever betrayed. You replied in the negative, and likewise the messengers never betray. Then I asked you what he ordered you to do. You replied that he ordered you to worship Allah and Allah alone and not to worship anything along with him and forbade you to worship idols and ordered you to pray, to speak the truth and to be chaste. If what you have said is true, he will very soon occupy this place which is underneath my feet now. And I knew it from the scriptures that he was going to appear, but I did not know he would be from you. And if I am sure to reach him, I would go immediately to meet him. And if I were with him, I would certainly wash his feet. The washing feet tradition is very interesting, isn't it? Heraclius then asked for the letter addressed by Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, which was delivered by Dihya to the governor of Busra who forwarded to Heraclius to read. The contents of the letter were as follows. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. This letter is from Muhammad, the slave of Allah and his messenger, peace be upon him, to Heraclius, the ruler of Byzantines. Peace be upon him who follows the right path. Then after, I invite you to Islam. And if you become a Muslim, you will be safe. And Allah will double your reward. And if you reject this invitation of Islam, you'll be committing a sin by misguiding your Arisian peasants. And I recite to you Allah's statement. O oh, people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, come to a word that is just between us and you, that we worship none but Allah, and that we associate no partners with him, and that none of us shall take others as lords besides Allah. No one as lords besides Allah, you see that? Then if they turn away, say, bear witness that we are Muslims. V364. Abu Sufyan then added, when Heraclius had finished his speech and he had read the letter, there was great hue and cry in the royal court. So we were turned out of that court. I told my companions that the questions of Ibn Abi Habsha the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has come so prominent that even the king of Bani al-Asfar of Byzantines is afraid of him. Thenceforth, I became sure that he, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would be the conqueror in the near future. 
till I embraced his long, i.e. Allah Asa wa Jal guided me to it. The sub-narrator adds, Ibn Natur was the governor of Vilya, Jerusalem, and Heraclius was the head of the Christians of Sham. Okay, the Christians of Sham, there you go. Ibn An Natur narrates that once while Heraclius was visiting Elia, Jerusalem, he got up in the morning with a sad mood. Some of his priests asked him why he was in that mood. Heraclius was a foreteller and an astrologer. He replied, At night, when I looked at the stars, I saw that the leader of those who practiced circumcision had appeared, become the conqueror, and asked, Who are they who practice circumcision? People replied, except the Jews, nobody practices circumcision, so you should just not be afraid of them Jews. Just issue orders to kill every Jew present in the country. Well, that's very strict. While they were discussing it, a member sent by the king of Ghassan, king of Ghassan, to convey the news of Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, to Heraclius was brought in. Having heard the news, he, Heraclius, ordered the people to go and see whether the messenger of Ghassan was circumcised. The people, after seeing him, told Heraclius that he was circumcised. Heraclius then asked him about the Arabs. The messenger replied, Arabs also practice circumcision. After hearing that, Heraclius remarked that sovereignty of this nation, Arabs, had appeared. Heraclius then wrote a letter to his friend in Rome, who was good as Heraclius in knowledge. Heraclius then left for Holmes, a town of Syria, and stayed there till he received the reply of his letter from his friend, who agreed with him in his opinion about the emergence of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the fact that he is indeed a Prophet. On that Heraclius invited all the heads of the Byzantines to assemble to his palace at Holmes. When they assembled, he ordered that all the doors of his palace be closed. And he came out and said, O Byzantines, if success is your desire, and if you seek right guidance and want your empire to remain, then give the Ba'ya pledge to this prophet, peace be upon him, i.e. embrace Islam. On hearing the views of Heraclius, the people ran towards the gates of the palace like onagers, but found the doors closed. Heraclius realized their hatred towards Islam, and when he lost the hope of their embracing Islam, he ordered, Bring them back to me. When he returned, he said, What I already said was just to test the strength of your conviction, and I have seen it. The people prostrated before him and became pleased with him, and this was the end of Heraclius' story in connection with his faith. Wow, the questioning of Heraclius was so like, what does he order you to do? Abu Sufyan answers. He sees the character of the Prophet is really good. It's amazing. Okay, now we're in the Book of Belief, Faith. Faith, i.e. to believe in the six articles of faith. One, Allah. Two, His, Allah's angels. Three, His, Allah's messengers. Four, His, Allah's books, i.e. the Torah, the Gospel, and the Quran, etc. Five, the Day of Resurrection. Six, Al-Qadr divine preordainments. Faith has more than 60 uh, subdivisions or parts. The highest one is La ilaha illallah. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah. And the lowest one is to remove harmful things from the ways, road, passages, etc. Please see Fath al-Bari for details. Oh, I remember that one. To remove obstacles out of the road. Poor people. I remember that. Chapter 1. The Statement of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Islam is based on five principles. And belief is both saying and acting, and it increases and decreases. Allah Asa wa Jal revealed the following verses concerning the subject, that they may grow more in faith along with their present faith, V48.4, and we increase them in guidance, V18.13. And Allah increases in guidance those who walk aright true believers in the oneness of Allah, who fear Allah much and abstain from all kinds of sins and evil deeds which he has forbidden, and love Allah much perform all kinds of good deeds which he has ordained, B1976, and said, as for those who accept guidance 
He, Allah Azzawajal, increases their guidance and bestows on them their piety. V4717. And the believers may increase in faith. Which of you has had his faith increased by it? As for those who believe it has increased their faith. And also the statement of Allah Azzawajal, fear them, but it only increases them in faith. And also the statement of Allah Azzawajal, and it only added to their faith and to their submissiveness to Allah. And to love and hate for Allah's sake is a part of faith. Okay, so to love and hate. Part of faith, okay. I like how that one's worded. Umar bin Abdul Aziz wrote to Adi bin Adi. Belief includes faraid, enjoying duties, legal laws of hudud, Allah's boundary, limits between lawful and unlawful things, and sunan, legal ways and deeds, acts of worship, etc. And whoever follows and acts on all of them completely has a complete belief, and whoever does not follow them completely does not act on them. His belief is incomplete. And should I live, I will tell you all about them so that you may act on them. And should I die, I'm not anxious to have your company. <laughs> I'm not anxious to have your company. Uh, it kind of sounds a little bit like, I'm not too eager to, you know, always have you around. I think that's interesting. Way. And the prophet Ibrahim, Abraham, may Allah be pleased with him, said, But to the stronger in faith, V2260, Muad said to Aswad bin Hilal, one of his companions, Let us sit for a while, so that we may dedicate that period of time to faith. Ibn Masud said, Yaqeen is perfect in faith, and Ibn Umar said, A person cannot attain true sense of piety unless and until he removes all suspicions from his heart, i.e. gives up all kinds of polytheism, evil deeds, and doubtful things, and start doing righteous good deeds regularly. Okay, notice that. So we have Ibn Umar and Ibn Masud. Alright. And the Prophet Abraham. I'll be pleased with him. And Mujahid said, He Allah, Asawajal, has ordained for you. Means, O Muhammad, peace be upon you, we have ordained for you and him, Noah, one religion, i.e. Islamic monotheism. Oh, Islamic monotheism. We're very clear on that. And Ibn Abbas explained, Allah in a clear way, as Islamic way, and Sunnah traditions of the Prophet. Excellent. Okay, so we have Hudud, Farid, the Sunnah. Yes. What's the other pillars? Al Qadr. The Night of Al Qadr. Chapter 2. Your invocation means your faith. And Allah Asawajal says, O Muhammad, peace be upon you to the believers. My Lord pays attention to you only because of your invocation to him. V2577. Think about that. Because of your invocation. Educational. What do you think, fam? Bukhari is amazing. <laughs>